<clears throat> Attention all thugs for less personnel. All right, so uh, another episode, exciting right. episode of developer commentary. I'm Mike Stout. I'm Tony Garcia. Look at this nice touch. You're rocketing through space on Giant Clank. Yeah, that is a nice touch. Yeah. I remember we particularly liked the symmetry of Ratchet riding on Clank's back. Yeah. Let's see, fires, missiles, punches. Oh, the bombs. All right, let's see, so. This um, was a particularly good use of the spherical world technology for the giant Clank battles. I think that worked very well in terms of giving you a big playground to run around with Clank. I agree, and, and the, the giant Clank being gigantic sort of gives you this in, very interesting sense of scale right. with the spherical horizons. I think the key was to blow everything up first and then uh, go after the guy because it like drops all the power-ups but you don't need them. Um, I don't know if that's true, but okay. Let's, let's do that. Oh yeah, look at the arrow. I was going to say I don't even know where he is, but then uh, the arrow helps me remember. Where the fuck is he? Dude, I'm going to fail. I think you I think you have to stay on him because he does get life back if you just leave him alone. Oh, that's why I had to destroy all the buildings cuz he goes destroys buildings and gets the power-ups. That's what it was. You need to you need to destroy them all so that he can't get them. I see. Oh, that's that's kind of cheap. <laughs> yeah, this is fascinating right here. It's good times. <laughs> Lots of explosions though, which are good. It's got a very, it's got a real rampage feel to it, which I really like. Yep, yep. Uh, this uh, this section very much inspired um, in. Uh, the next one, the the Hollywood rampaging through the, the pretend right. city, uh, because I just really like the sense of being giant Clank in a you know in a Godzilla type environment. Right. It's just really sort of a neat usage of him. So who did uh, art or uh, programming for this? Uh, well, since it's a spherical world, Peter would be a good guess as to who might have done this level. But I don't think it was him. Um, you know, it's, it's... I usually remember who did the levels based off of complaining. Right? That's a pretty yeah. good way. People, whoever complained about the level the most is probably the guy who was doing the level. And uh, <laughs> I don't recall a lot of complaining regarding this level. I think this one was pretty good from the outset of I mean, aside from the spherical world nonsense of having to do spherical physics, um, it was a pretty good level. God, if I lose this, we're just going to have to not record no, the these are, try. No, these are pretty easy to win, from what I recall, because we just wanted it to be fun, so I don't think there was a lot of difficulty involved here. I mean, we, we deliberately, we, uh, not deliberately, we generously place those pickups, and everything gives you hell. There you there go. go. Oh, that was riveting, man. Divide and conquer, huh? Hey, guess you guys were prime after all. You're going to the Megacorp Games. Welcome to Megacorp Games. Oh, more arenas. Oh, this is your level, dude. Yeah, this was... Level uh, 11. Yeah, that level was a pain in the ass because that level has... An enemy segment, a hover bike segment, and an arena segment. In the not to level. mention the, not to mention the greatest fireflies that have ever been programmed. That's yeah. Well, I don't want to toot my own horn, but so there was a lot going on in that level. And uh, in terms of keeping things in memory, that level was the worst, the absolute worst. Well. Um, I don't know how much more there is to do in this level. I think we're done with this level. I think if you yeah, go... Think, yeah. But I can probably buy armor. Hopefully. We can only hope that you can buy armor. 
I can. Try to walk off the taxi, Mike. Let's see. Let's see if we can uh, break the game. Try as hard as you can. Nope. I was unsuccessful. Here we go. Bam. Look at oh. that. Look at that major change. All right, let's uh, let's head off to the next level. See what we got. All right. This may get cut. This may be a bonus episode released through the uh, the website. We don't know. Uh, it'll depend. But we 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 don't know how much more we have to say about space combat. Uh, especially at this level. It's a pretty short level. Just a small uh, closed off segment. Uh, so it's not very long. Uh, so I'm not sure how much we'll be able to get out of this. And if it is if it is uh, uh, you know longer than it seems, we could always uh, uh, you know maybe go do some mining or something as another. You know, side segment. Oh, yeah. Because uh, we'll have so much more to say about the mine. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Oh, God. It's off to a great start. Um, what was I saying? Um, you know, that maybe we could make a, a, you know, optional episodes out of these. Oh, God. <laughs> I think... I think we're, you're, you're pretty much guaranteeing that this isn't going to be on any sort of release if you keep dying like that. God, I hope not. Or rather, I hope I don't release it. Okay, so yeah, so... Uh, then the, the hover turret comes out and tries to repair it, and I have to... kill the hover turrets before they repair... Is there something that actually tries to repair them? I thought yeah. they just died. No, see, it's right there. I got rare tanium from killing it. Exciting, exciting, exciting. Um, so, uh, like the other segments, this was done by uh, Craig Goodman. Uh, and Roberto and Eric. Uh, sorry, art-wise. Right. Uh, I'm just yeah, filling and, out the rest of the, the staff. Sorry. Uh, but the, uh, you know, a pretty, pretty looking level. Uh, I think it's really good looking. I don't like the repair bots. It's a weird mechanic. It's a uh, it's negative reinforcement, and I've I've never really liked using negative reinforcement as a uh, a game mechanic. What what the difference between negative reinforcement and punishment is? Uh, negative reinforcement is like uh, you know things decay over time, or uh, the example they always give is uh, you know like the the rat in the cage, right? Punishment would be if it did something bad and you sh and you gave an electric shock. Uh, negative reinforcement would be you give it an electric shock until it does something good. And these are all repaired now. You're back to oh square one. God. You know what I think the big problem is, Mike? What's We've the... never upgraded our ship. We could have gone to the ship shack and spent some of that rare titanium. Oh. And gotten some upgrades. I think that's the biggest problem we have right now. So maybe I should, uh, uh, if I die again, head over to the ship shack. Yeah, I think so. Oh, there's debris. Maybe the debris has uh, missiles and stuff in it. This is uh, just about as boring as it possibly could be, I think. <laughs> <sighs> um, I got nothing, dude. Well, it's difficult to add a lot of variety into the space combat challenges. I think that's the big takeaway oh. we have right now. I think maybe you should go get some upgrades, otherwise I think this is going to be impossible. Alright. Slim Cognito Ship Shack. That was sort of the the name of the game, wasn't it? If you don't get upgrades, you're in trouble. Ratchet. Yeah. That should have been Ratchet and Clank 2. If you don't get upgrades, well, fuck you. <laughs> and maybe we should start the episode from here if we do it. So we totally didn't just fail the challenge a bunch of times and come back here. Oh no. Uh, let's see, what do we got? Uh, so that's engine laser cannons. That's probably worth buying. That's probably what you want, yeah. Uh, mine launcher, fast lock missile launcher. You only have 30. I think you can only really afford the lasers, so I would just go for those. There's a shield. Let's see. Mm, yeah, you're right. Uh, oh, then there's the stuff I don't particularly care about. Um, Alright. 
Best, I should probably make it a little bit easier for you. Best level ever, by the way. <laughs> That's an entire level to make that. All right. So, welcome to Ratchet and Clank Developer Commentary. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, I'm I'm uh, severely perturbed. Well, now that we've got the, the upgrades, though, no problem, right? Uh, we can only hope. Okay, um, let me go up here. Oh, that's not the right way to do it. Yeah, see, now these are just going down super fast. Yep. Well, the missiles help, too. Three missiles and they're dead. One left. Just get the one left. There we go. Yeah, nice and easy. Super quick. You are the man, that's the Tony. Of, that's the beginning and the end of the commentary right there. <laughs> uh, is this Tuesday or Wednesday? Anyway, sorry to have missed our meeting, but I was called away to film a commercial for our weapons facilitory. But, but, sir, what about the commercial? I was great. So it's probably good that we're not going to ever show that episode to anyone ever. Okay. Oh, here's my level. This, we get to talk about the first, the, 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 this is the first level we ever had with geometry underneath a water plane. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh... Brian Hastings had to put a special hack into the the hero just for this level. Awesome. Because we never you never go underneath a water plane without swimming except in this level. Right. So stop by today and bring the kids. Our tours are both Oh man. And fun. I like that's a good joke. I like that one. And who knows? You just might learn something. All right, uh, let's not do another challenge. Okay, let's go to Joba.